Hey coaches, welcome to iCoach Football. I'm your host, Joel Forsberg, and I have a special guest today, Eric Wegner. Eric, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, appreciate it. We've been talking about it for a while yeah. and finally got you on, and I appreciate you being here. It's going to be great. Uh, why would you want to listen to Eric Wegner? Well, <laughs> let me tell you, Eric was the head coach of the 8th grade champions in 2022 for the South Suburban Youth Football League which is a big league. Yep. It's, I would say it's probably the most dominant league in Minnesota. Very competitive. Uh, they got 11 cities and 18 teams in that grade. In those playoffs, your team came out number one out of 18 teams, yes, which sir. is pretty awesome. So we want to pick your brain and we want to know like some things like what you did and how that affected how you guys just won games. And so, first of all, I want to start with defense, right? Defense wins championships, yes, it does. as we're always told. Yes, it does. So let's talk about your defense a little <clears throat> bit. You called the defense, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. And so what defense did you run? Uh, I ran a 5-2 with a joker for that strong safety. So it's a five front, two linebackers, free safety back, and then the strong safety, I call it as a, as a joker. It can drop back into a cover two, can move up, split those linebackers, become your middle linebacker. Uh, he can drop over if they spread into trips and he takes the slot. Um, it basically puts a lot of pressure on that position and yeah. everybody else can kind of just keep doing their job. They're cued off of, uh, off of one person. So basically that's the person that is looking in for the plays and when they make a move, the rest of the defense knows what to do based on the move. Did they drop back? Did they move into the box or did they take a wing? So your interior five, how did you line those guys up? Yeah, so I, I would always start them as the middle three heads up. Yeah. And then the so two over the nose tackle nose over tackle. the center. Yep. And then the two DTs over the over the guards. Yeah. And then the outside linebackers or defensive ends, yeah. whatever you want to call them. I call them defensive ends, yeah. would be actually out quite wide. I would have them okay. outside of the tackles um, and even straight up to a tight end if there was a tight end. Okay. Um, because it, basically what I wanted to do is, is give the almost misconception that there were lanes there. Right. Right. And after a play or two, youth football, first few plays, typically they're going to be feeling out the middle of the line. Yeah. Um, once you've clogged that up and you've given them an illusion of a lane, you can start setting traps for those linebackers to come up into them. Okay. Um, those DNs, you know, we we don't pinch hard. Yeah. Right. That's what most off or most defensive lines do is they take yeah. that outside and they pinch hard. Right. That's not our game plan. Ours is to go at a forty-five degree angle. Yep. And again, get those tall, high Q athletes out there. Yep. And allow them to make a decision. Right. Right. Do I continue after the quarterback? Do I tuck back in if it's a run to mind help mind that gap? Am I now I'm already out in the flat. You want yeah. to try something short? I'm tall. I'm in the flat. I've yeah. got good visibility. So are those outside contained guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the outside contained. If the ball rolls away, he chases. That's right. If it rolls two, he kind of contains. Yeah. If it's it, well, and and mine's Unless that second gap. Yeah, mine's right? the second he, gap. He's yeah. helping out that that yeah. defensive tackle and yeah. the linebacker. So again, right. I invite that lane. Okay, so this sounds like the linebackers are going in the C gap. Yeah, got C gap responsibility. So you got C, the B's are covered, and then the nose is has A your, gap. Has your okay. has your car crash in the middle? How often do you switch up the front? Do you uh, as far as the personnel or the scheme? The scheme. Uh, very rarely. Okay. Um, you know, again, if we start finding that we've got somebody that can really pass well on us, yeah. or if we we put ourselves in a spot where we have no choice but to either blitz or drop back. Like you have to make those adjustments. Yeah. I want to keep that same, again, I'm going to back to that word framework. Yeah. And, and here's why. It, it's not just difficult for kids to keep track of all those moving yeah. pieces. It can be hard for your assistants to keep track of that too, mm -hmm. right? And so you, you want a framework that doesn't have to be broken down unless it has to be broken down. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, there's so many nuanced things you can do within the framework. We run yeah. tons of stunts. And That was my next question. Oh, okay. So I'm glad you got to yeah. that. So when you say, okay, tell me some of the stunts that you run. So my favorite is we just call it Texas and the defensive end crashes down hard. Yeah. And that, that defensive tackle who has been heads up all, you know, all drive. Yeah. Swings around and, and takes that outside. Yeah, so it's like a twist, an outside twist. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yep. I have a video Huge on that, that inside and outside. Now on my video, I... I kind of discourage at the younger levels to do an outside twist just because usually I put my most, most athletic uh, players at DN. Right. I don't want them getting washed out in, you know, usually that guy that's coming down is washing out yep. and the guy coming out now is outside. And I never really had a lot of tackles. So, so here's where I run that. that. Outside, yeah, okay. Sh short side of the field. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So I'm not giving up the possibility of one of my better athletes getting caught in the wash with the long side of the field. Okay. Short side of the field, we take yep. that shot. 
because very frequently, again, especially after they've seen him taking a hard 45 yeah. all game long, yeah. now all of a sudden he crashes in, right? Right. You're He's now causing a disaster here. You've got that extra pressure. But if it goes wrong, yeah. your linebacker and joker have a much shorter field to cover. Oh, I like right? that. So very much on the short side, especially, again, because we've set the tone. Right. We don't come hard on, on the outsides. We come to a 45, so they yeah. get used to seeing that. Now, all of a sudden, he went in. I Oh, there's something different. I have to follow that. It's just yeah. instinct. Does the, then, does, the, does the tackle that's pulling around, does, is he now, does he understand the outside container, or is he coming fast and hard? The the defensive tackle? Yeah, the defensive tackle. Yep. He, it, it, he's coming hard, yeah. but he does understand that those eyes have to be up. Right. This right. isn't a heads-down move. Mm -hmm. And so we work a lot on eye level. Yep. And when you come around off, right off the butt of, of your defensive end who came up there, those eyes should be up. You should know if that ball's coming to you or if you've got a beeline to the quarterback. Those are only two options. Yeah. Right? It's either coming your way or it's not. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if it's not, he's running down going. the line. Yeah, he's going. He's, he's chasing going. from the line. That's right. Oh, okay. That's right. The, are there are there things? So if I'm hearing you right, you, you kind of stick with the same base and the stunts are the things that change and the joker. He, yeah. He's constantly okay. in motion. Yep, the you, okay. you have to have somebody that... that can handle that much movement out there. And so that's, I understand that's not necessarily a defense everybody's gonna wanna to try to employ. So that outside twist, is that one of your main stunts? What's another stunt you uh, have? The, the only other stunt that we ran on a real frequent basis would be inside, having that nose tackle yep. crash in again. Yeah. Uh, I have two different, I like two different body styles at the nose. Yeah. I'm not going to use that with the little fella. Right. So when, when, when the bigger guy's in there, he's crashing to a side and they're, they're twisting right into yep. that gap, right? Yeah. That's, I love to use that on short distances mm -hmm. if I think they're coming up the middle or if it's a quarterback sneak. Yeah. Um, because now that center is not sure what to do and he's looking over here, right? Right. So I like to use those on short short distances. Yeah. I can tell you that I, I took some criticism yeah. for where I placed two of two of the better athletes. Okay. And Why? Because uh, people thought they should be in different positions. Where where'd you, where'd you place them? Uh, one at that free safety spot. Yeah. And, and no one's like, getting de no one's getting deeper there. And, and that was that's it. He's yeah. a he's a great athlete. Yeah. And so a lot of people said, why why are you putting him so far off the ball? Yeah. Well, because I believe enough in in our preparation and our training and our guys to yeah. keep this stuff in front of them. Yeah. But it doesn't take, it takes one play to get beat deep. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But it takes 10, 12, 14 to drive 80 yards. Right. And I'm going to take my chances on that all day. Now, again, if I had different personnel groups, you may have to make different decisions. But I, I put him back there. I said, don't think, react. Right. And nothing gets past you. Job. That's it. The there's there's a lot of little things like that. You know, we started every game. Um, my nose tackles job. Uh the first couple plays, yeah. you have to mind the gap. But your job is the second that football moves, you are in that center's chest. Right. Wow. I want I want four plays in for that kid to know this is going to be a long day. Yeah. I don't want him <laughs> thinking about a clean snap. Yeah. I want right. him thinking about I got to get my hands up or I'm going to get hit again. Yeah. Just those little things, that little physicality, make over the course of not not a play or two, but over the course of a quarter and a half in a game. Yeah. It, it makes a difference. So you must be practicing that with those. Constantly. Those, yeah. Let's go to offense now. So what offense did you guys run? So we did run the, the Veer offense from the, the high school. High school, yeah. Um, and, you know, we started off with... The Veer. So you yeah. just explain for those who don't oh, know what the Veer is. <laughs> yep. So uh, you've got a quarterback, uh, a B-back, a running back behind them, and then two offset, uh, we call them A-backs. Uh, I've heard them called wings, whatever you want to yeah. call them, that are offset basically uh, over the, the tackle tight end looking position. Yeah. Also, uh, it's also can be called the, the flex bone triple option. There's a lot of videos Lots on the of flex variations. Bone. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that's what our high school runs here in Shakopee. And so that gets handed down to the, and you especially feel pressure in seventh and eighth grade to run it, right? But yeah. now a lot of coaches will go off of it. We did. And, okay, so you did. So that was my next question. Yep. So how, how many plays, well, first of all, how many plays did you have about in your playbook that you guys practiced at, you know, at, well, it, it, it grew, as, as is probably normal, it, yeah. it grew throughout the year, right? We would So have, going into the first game, how many plays did you have ready to go? I mean, seven or eight. Really? That's, that seems like a lot. Uh, well, but yeah. to be clear, yeah. dive, dive. Okay, right? that's, that's considered that's two? two. Okay. okay. Waggle, waggle. Okay. QB snake, right? Yeah. So it's, it's very scaled down. Yeah. Very scaled down. Uh, I would say I usually had, um, I would have about four plays that could go either way. So I had eight options. Yeah. Right. It was I, the dive. 
you know, it was it was the dive, it was the kick yep. or off tackle, off and then it was the toss, and it was some kind of QB keep of some kind, either QB in or QB blast to the outside. So we would have both, right? Yeah. We'd have a, a quarterback out and, and yeah. then a quarterback dive. Right. And then we would always have switch crossers. I got to have a pass in there. Right? Yeah, so I had like one pass. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you'd, so you'd have one. So you would say before your first game, you would have about four to five plays that could go either way. So, yep. and then um, run plays and then one pass play. Somewhere. And then one play f- specific for that opponent. So oh, okay. each week I would look at or just use my experience previously against them to yeah. know, hey, there's a specific vulnerability I want to exploit. Yeah. And we would install that play as well. So when you got to, by, by the end of the year, it was about 70% the high school offense, 20% plays we just like, 10% specific for this opponent. Oh, okay. Right? That's a so good That's, that's, a that's good sort mix. of how we would break it That out. won't get the coach too upset that you weren't running their offense. I mean, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I think the, the last, the, towards the last three games, I just went, I just totally turned it into um, the wishbone. I'm like, I'm not running, I'm not running this flex bone anymore. Yeah. Even though I had huge success with the flex bone, you know, the year, the uh, year before, yeah. you know, making it to the championship round. And then, it, then the, the personnel changed, the age was different, you yeah. know, and kids were different. So, well, one of the reasons I liked to stick with the high school um, offense as a base yeah. is because your opponents begin to know it, right? Yeah. They've seen it at the high school level. They've seen it when they play you. They've seen yeah. it. And so when you line up with it, they just go, yep, I know what this is. And you, you do have the ability to lull them to sleep quite quickly. The second time we played a particular team, mm-hmm. so we played them in the regular season and then we played them in the first round of playoffs. Yeah. We lined up in the first uh, the first drive. We, we took ball, which I never do. Yeah. I, I wanted, I, we took ball and we lined up. What, what made you decide to take the ball? Because I wanted to do this. Okay. <laughs> we lined up and we ran dive, our bread and butter mm-hmm. play, four straight times. Yeah. Boom, boom. And, and without huddles. Yeah. Nice. I, I, hey, we're gonna line up. We're gonna dive. We're gonna dive. We're gonna dive. Do it quick. Get that up tempo. Yeah, I like that. And so that's how I'd start a lot of games. In their mind, they're just like, "Yep, here we go again." Yep, they're coming. And then, Dude, would you say dive left, dive right, dive left, or just one side to the right? Well, to the we left? had a we had a pretty dominant one side. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I believe if I'm going back through it, I think we went left, right, left, left. Oh, right. Okay, we, yeah. we stayed. It was very. That's a good. That's a good thing for coaches to know. Sometimes I like to do that same thing. I like to get two or three plays that I just know I want to see how they respond to, yep. and it's usually for our for the flex bone or the rear. It is the dive. Yep. That kind of sets up everything else. Yep. So I'll do. I I would often do the same thing. Two to the right, one to the left. Yep. Or something like that, and then see how they respond. So that okay. So you would do that. And they would. F- Sort of get into here we go against Shakopee football. Yeah, great. So we ran four straight. That fifth play, we came out four wide. Wow! And you should have seen the panic. So d- two double twins. Yep. And it wasn't even a pass play. <laughs> I just wanted to spread them out. I sent everybody deep. Quarterback dropped. They're not sure what to do. He ran. Probably got 17 yards out of that play. Nice. Right. So it's just constantly again a chess game. How did you use the pass in the game? Like, obviously, if you just run, did, I mean, did, was there a strategy to use the pass to help the run? Yeah, absolutely. But okay. but it comes the other way around. It starts okay. with the run, yep. and then you can open them up and bring. You know, you you start having a few successful runs. Yeah, they're gonna have eight, nine guys, if yep. not in the box, coming toward it. Yeah, at some point you have to do something different to open that up. Right, right. And in third grade, the version of open that up is toss it to the best kid and have him run outside. Right. Right? Yeah. Right. Well, that doesn't work in eighth grade. Yeah. Right? Not, that doesn't work anymore. So uh, a lot of those little crossing routes or little yeah. flare routes, little yeah. wheel routes, not trying to make it, again, complicated. We don't need yeah. 48 yards on this pass. Yeah. We need seven to, to get them back off the line for right. a little bit, and then we're going to run it again. Right? Yeah. Right. So we used it as a change of pace, I guess would be the best way to say it. But it's it's to, to keep the run moving. Right. Uh, as opposed to open up something else. It's, it's, well, it's funny you say it because if anybody who's been watching my videos for a long time knows that that's exactly my strategy. Mm-hmm. Establish the run yep. and then and then use the pass to open up and to exploit what they're showing you in the run game. Absolutely. And then also, I mean, I don't know how you feel about this, but if if the run is just dominating, I don't even go to the pass, right? Yeah. It's like, it, it would be maybe towards the end if we're way up and I want, like you said, have experience, some fun, have you know, fun, yes. get some experience. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll start passing. Because you do need your quarterback and your line to know how to pass in case you need it later. Yeah, right. Right. That's right, yeah. So you can't completely put it to sleep even if you're dominating. Right. You've got to get 
four, five, six, seven attempts a game just to say we know how to do this in yeah. the event we need to do this. Well, thanks, Eric. Yeah. I appreciate you being here. Thanks this has been me. a great time. Uh, I'm looking forward to having you back. I awesome. hope you will come back. I would love to. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate right. you. See you.